This is exciting, isn't it? And I know you are ready to hit the road. Before you do climb behind the driver's seat, I wanna take a couple of minutes and go over some of the features and functions your motorhome may have. We're going to start on the exterior of the driver's side. It has a lot of the goodies you're going to use on a daily basis. So when you are pulling into camp, make sure the driver's side is on the same side as the hookups. Outside of all the storage you could ask for, opening the base, you will find your shore power cord, which you need if you want juice at camp. Quick reminder, make sure the breakers are off before you plug in. Your black and gray tanks are here, and draining these is not as bad as you think. Remember, pull the black handle first. If you want to catch your favorite TV shows or the big game, this is where you plug into the campground satellite or cable service. When hooking up to the city water connection, use a hose made specifically for fresh water. These outdoor showers are great for hosing off those muddy shoes, and in a minute, I'll show you a neat place to store them. Your coach is also going to have a generator. If it is propane powered, make sure the propane tank is on. Word of warning, the exhaust pipe gets very hot, so make sure you or someone you are with does not bump into it or touch it. That'll end the fun real fast. There are also other areas on the outside that get hot, like your water heater and furnace exhaust. Taking a quick look at the rear of the coach, you have a trailer hitch. Check the towing capacity before you hook and go. You may have a ladder leading up to the roof. Unless there is some sort of problem, you should not climb up there to lounge or get a bird's eye view of the campsite. Swinging around to the other side of the coach, look at that, tons and tons of storage over here. Along with your exterior TV, you'll find a set of speakers to pump out the jams. The radio controls are in the bedroom, I'll show you that in a minute. There are also exterior outlets if you need to plug something in. You need to take note on what side your fuel fill is, as it does not always line up with the arrow on the fuel gauge on the dash. Also, when pulling into a gas station, remember the height of your motorhome. If the gas station overhang looks too low for comfort, it probably is. This is where you fill your fresh water tank. When filling your fresh water tank, and this is just like your city water, you want to make sure you are using a hose made specifically for drinking water. It's time to take a look around inside. As we make our way through the door, notice you have two keyholes. The top is for the deadbolt, the bottom locks the handle. The first thing you should do when climbing aboard is find your battery disconnect switch. Go ahead, turn it to use, and leave it there the entire trip. This panel also has switches for your awning and exterior patio and awning lights. These switches are for your interior lights. On this particular unit, you have an inverter. You can switch this on so you can run your 110 volt appliances off the 12 volt house batteries. This is your auto gen start. Turn it to enable and leave it there. This way the generator will kick on if your house batteries start to run out of juice. It also has a temperature sensor that kicks the generator on to fire up the AC if the temp gets too hot inside. Something else you'll love on the entry steps, remember those muddy shoes? This little door slides back and makes for a great mudroom after a day of adventure. Take a look around. All the comforts of home are here. This is everything you need to live in luxury on the road. You have a kitchen, bedroom, and bathroom. And I know, I know you want to hit the road, but we need to take a look at a few features and functions. Think of this control panel as your op center. This is where you turn the generator on. And if your coach is equipped, this button moves your slide walls in or out. Simply press the button in the direction you want to move the wall. Hold the button down until the room is fully extended or retracted. Keep holding the button down another two seconds until you hear this noise. This is the sound of the motors being synced up so they are ready for your next move. You're going to turn on the water pump when you are not hooked up to city water. To get hot water, make sure you turn the water heater on. You can choose between propane or 110 volt when you are hooked to shore power. You can check the levels of your tanks and propane from here. This control panel is for your leveling jacks. If you need to cool your coach down from a trip through the desert or warm it up after a drive through the snow-covered mountains, your thermostat is very similar to the one in your home. Choose heat or AC, select your fan speed, and set the temp. There's a slider on the AC unit overhead to adjust the airflow. You can also open the covered vents to let in some fresh air. The seating areas are experts at multitasking. Check it out. On some units, the driver's and passenger seats spin around. All you have to do is pull this handle. 
Behind the cockpit, Thor Motor Coach installs seatbelts so you can ride in style and safety. If you have little ones, installing their car seat is simple. Just like in your daily driver, Thor Motor Coach installs tether anchor points. For a front-facing seat, drop your tether through the slot, attach and pull tightly. Finish securing the seat with the seat belts and again, you really want to wrench these down. For rear-facing seats, you run the seat belt through the base, then pull to tighten. To make sure the seat is installed correctly, wiggle it side to side. Back and forth, it should not move more than one inch in any direction. Tuck the seat belts away and you have the best seat in the house. When it's time to crash for the night, both areas convert into comfortable beds. To convert the booth dinette, remove the bottom cushions, flip the handle underneath the table, push the table down, then arrange your cushions. Your motorhome may have one of two styles of drop-down overhead bunks. They both work the same way. Simply turn the key and press the switch. To make up an over-the-cab bunk, simply put the cushion and ladder in place. You have your eyes on that TV, don't you? Thor Motor Coach wants to make sure you can catch the big game or have a family movie night. If you want to watch cable or the local over-the-air stations, you need to press the antenna booster button to switch between the two. Don't forget to program the channels, and you can always fine-tune with the adjustable TV antenna. If you'd like, you can pop in a DVD. Some units have a 110-volt DVD player, others have a 12-volt player. They both work exactly like the one you have at home. A few items to point out in the kitchen. On the fridge, there's a switch that reads auto, off, and gas. Set this to auto. You can adjust the temp control from here as well. A few other neat bells and whistles Thor Motor Coach puts in for your convenience. Plenty of USB charging stations for all your gadgets. Taking a quick tour of the bathroom, it has everything you need. And something to remember here, when flushing, push down on the pedal until the bowl is clean. Then keep holding that pedal down for an extra five count just to make sure the pipes are clear. In the bedroom, the comfortable Denver mattress makes sleeping in easy. No need to get up early. Hey, it's your vacation, right? But there's also plenty of storage back here. And the bedroom is also where you find the Bluetooth radio to control the outside speakers we showed you earlier. All right, we're almost ready to hit the road. So let's settle into the driver's seat, adjust your seat, adjust your mirrors. Outside of a few different switches, like the emergency start, the dash layout is just like in your car. You have all your gauges, HVAC and radio. The display in the head unit is also your backup camera and a side view camera that pops on when you turn on your directionals. If you're towing, use the tow haul switch and don't forget to downshift while driving down those steep mountain roads. Now it's your turn to shift and to drive. Wherever you're going and whatever you're doing, have fun, make it the trip of a lifetime. I'm Steve Duval from Thor Motor Coach. Thanks for watching. There are a lot of similarities between driving a motorhome and driving a car. However, there are a lot of differences as well, such as your dash layout. Yes, you have a speedometer and a gas gauge and so forth, but you also have fans and map lights and sunshades. So let's go inside and I'm going to show you where all the switches are and how to operate them. A nice, easy to navigate layout here. At the top of the center stack sits your entertainment and display for your rear view and side view cameras. There are five buttons below that, starting on the left. This raises and lowers the sunshade. This turns your overhead cabin lights on and off. You can fire up your generator with the Gen Start button. The next two, driver and passenger fan. These control your dash fans. Press up for high speed, down for low. Below that bank of switches sits your climate control functions. On the left is your fan speed. Temp control is in the middle with vent selection on the right. The snowflake turns the air conditioning on and off and the arrows are for recirculating the cabin air. At the bottom are three outlets. On the left and right are 12 volt outlets. In the middle is a USB port and an HDMI port so you can mirror your smartphone on the display screen. When sitting in the driver's seat, you'll see these three switches to your right labeled Reset, Setup and Info. These display important info in the middle of your dash. This is your odometer, trip meter and outside temp. It also displays how many miles you have left in the tank and how many hours are on the engine. You can also perform a systems check, giving you readouts of your engine and transmission temp, along with your oil pressure and brake fluid. Looking at the steering wheel, the stalk on the right is your gear selector and the tow haul button for when you're trailering. On the steering wheel itself, cruise control. On and off are to the left, 
Resume, set, accelerate, and coast are on the right. Your hazard light switch is found on the top of the steering column. Straightforward gauges on the dash. Top left is your oil pressure with fuel gauge below. Here's your tachometer, your speedometer, flanked by your transmission temp and your coolant temp. The stock on the left side of the wheel is for your wipers, turn signals, and bright lights. To the left of that is a bank of switches and knobs featuring your emergency start button and your fog light switch. Below, the knob for headlights and parking lights, along with the dash light dimmer knob. Moving to the driver's side armrest, at the bottom is where you'll find adjustments for your side view mirrors and the heating option. At the top is the panel for your leveling jacks. For more owner's resources, visit ThorMotorCoach.com. Let's start with the center console. On the bottom right, you'll see an HDMI port to mirror your smartphone on your radio display screen and a USB charger to keep all your gadgets running. You have two 12 volt DC outlets for things like GPS, phone chargers, and radar detectors. The HVAC controls are pretty straightforward. You have your temperature dial and your AC vent and defroster selection. Just to the left is where you select your fan speed. Moving to the steering wheel and steering column. Along with selecting your gear, there's a button on the end of the stalk that activates the tow haul mode for when you're trailering. The stalk on your left is for your wipers, bright lights, and directionals. On the steering wheel itself, you'll find your cruise control. The on-off switch is on the left, while the set, resume, and coast buttons are on the right. The switch for the hazard lights is mounted on top of the steering column. The gauge layout has your tack on the left with the temperature gauge below. The speedometer is on the right with your voltmeter below. In the middle, your fuel gauge is top left with the temperature gauge sitting next to it. Right below those gauges are your odometer and trip meters. The trip meter reset stalk is directly below the speedometer. A few more switches, knobs, and buttons sit to the driver's left. On the dash are your parking and headlamp controls along with your dash light dimmer knob. The mirror adjustment along with the heating option is mounted here. On the armrest are the door lock and window controls. Also on the right, at about knee level, is the emergency start button. For more owner's resources, visit ThorMotorCoach.com. Outside of being significantly bigger than your car or SUV, getting behind the wheel of a Sprinter is very similar to getting behind the wheel of your car. Let's take a look at the dash layout, where all the button switches and knobs are, and how they work. The Sprinter offers up a clean, simple layout that's intuitive to use. Radio and entertainment and your rearview camera sits at the top of the center stack. Climate controls are directly below. The dial on your left sets your temperature. These buttons adjust your fan speed and these lights indicate that speed. The window defroster indicator is at the top. The van with the arrow in it recirculates your cabin air. Below is your air conditioner on and off button. This dial controls your airflow, starting at the top and working clockwise. This directs air to the windshield and vents. This setting sends your air to the windshield and through the vents and into the footwell. At the 6 o'clock position, this directs all the air into the footwell, and this symbol at the 9 o'clock position directs air through the center and side vents. The button to the right of the dial switches the reheat function on and off. Moving to the panel below, the triangle is for your hazard lights, the ASR button is your traction control, this button controls your door locks. You're going to find two ports below that, a USB charger and an HDMI port so you can mirror your smartphone on the radio display screen. Your gear shifter is to the left of that. Now let's look at the dash. The speedometer is on the left and there are two buttons to the left of that. The letter M is for menu selection and changing the display, the O is your reset button. The display screen is in the middle of the dash and easy to read. Here you'll find your odometer, trip meter, selected gear, time of day, speed, 
fuel gauge, and diesel exhaust fluid and maintenance reminder. On the right is the tachometer. There are two buttons to the right of your tack, a plus and a minus. These adjust the brightness of your dash lights. There are two stalks on the left of the wheel. The one on top is for your cruise control. The stalk on the bottom controls your turn signals, your wipers, and your bright lights. Turning on your lights is done with this knob to the left of the gauge cluster. Moving to the door sill, here you'll find your side view mirror adjustments and your window controls. For more on our resources, visit ThorMotorCoach.com. All right, the road trip is over. You've arrived at your destination. You are ready to put your slide rooms out and go have some fun. Before you do any of that, you need to make sure your coach is level using the leveling jacks. It's not always possible, but try to park on a somewhat level surface. Before you put the jacks down, make sure there is nothing underneath that would get in the way of the jacks on their trip down. Check out the ground. Is it soft? Is it soggy? Does it sink in? If the ground is soft, you can always put boards under the jacks to distribute the weight. A board two foot by two foot is recommended. Make sure your front tires are straight, the ignition key is on, and that parking brake is set. Now turn on the power to the jacks. If your readout says low voltage, go ahead and let that engine run until those bolts come up. Press auto level. You're going to hear some noise as the coach sets the jacks, and you are going to know when they are down and level. If you are on slope terrain, you can always manually lower the jacks. Hold the manual button for two seconds. The light will then turn on next to the jack you need to lower. Go ahead and press that button. You also want to make sure the wheels of the motorhome are not lifted off the ground. If you run into an error, it will show up in the display, and you're going to hear an alarm. The reset is simple. Push the retract and enter buttons at the same time.